I am Amber Ringwood with All Things Wild Rehabilitation and raccoons are one of my favorite animals that we rehabilitate here. Raccoons eat anything they can find that might possibly be edible. So they'll eat vegetables or bugs or worms. Anything that can go in their mouth will go in their mouth. Just like a toddler, honestly. It's just like having a, a high octane toddler all the time. And they touch everything and put everything in their mouth and everything in their hands and they pull, pull everything apart. Um, <laughs> you always see them dunking things in water and it's not because they're washing it or cleaning it and there's all kinds of myths out there like they don't have salivary glands. What it is is they have lots of nerve receptors on their on their hands so if they put their hands in the water whatever they're feeling and see what's going on with it check for sharp bits check for cracks and crevices and ways to open it things to pick apart while they're looking around for predators or what else is going on in the world so they can see with their hands while they're looking at everything else. The other misconception is that that they actually eat trash. They don't eat trash. They are picking through your trash to eat the things that you threw away that are actually still worth eating. They're just hungry. So if they're in a trash can, it means that there's nothing available to them directly. A lot of people think, oh, I want a raccoon as a pet. Well, they're definitely not a pet. Even if, even if it were legal to keep one in your house, I can't imagine having one. As much as I love our ambassadors, I can't imagine having them run free through my house. They are into everything. Anything that can open is open. Anything that can go in a mouth is in a mouth. Everything is destroyed. Right. So raccoons are found on almost every continent other than Antarctica and Australia. And they thrive mostly where people are. So the higher the population of people, the higher the population of raccoons because they do well living off of all of our discarded bits. Anything that like a three to five year old kid, like the little playhouses and the little books that open and light up and things like that and the touch and feel books and play things, they love them. The, anything that has little small moving parts entertain them to all ends. Like if you give them a bell inside a ball, inside another ball, they will do everything they can to undo it. Like I gave them a whole bunch of softballs, like the big softballs, and they undo all the lacing and they undo the lacing and then they peel off the leather and then they start to undo the cork and in the inside because <laughs> they just like to they like to undo the puzzle work so when we get raccoons in we generally have them for four to five months so just like you would raise up a little baby puppy um they have to be you know fed and fed and stimulated and taken care of. We generally get them in uh, starting around June as little bitty babies found in attics and construction sites, things like that. They're brought in little tiny babies that still have their eyes closed and everything. And we nurse them up and raise them and teach them how to, how to be raccoons. Their lifespan is, you know, equal to that of a dog, about, you know, 12, 12 to 15 years in the wild. And so this beginning part where they're babies with us is super important. So we try to give them the best nutrition we can because we can't give them all the skills that a mother raccoon would give them. So we can at least give them a nutritional head start so that they have a healthy body to start with on top of the few things that we can help them learn how to do. We bring them out into the big outdoor enclosures so that they can learn to climb and fish and catch bugs and things that a raccoon would do. 
day by day, it doesn't sound like a lot, but over the span of time they're here, it's probably you know, $75 to $100 per raccoon. And we have, we generally get in, I think this year we had over 140 raccoons come through. So that, that adds up when they're all ding and taking care of taking care of business because we want to make sure everybody's fed and vaccinated and taken care of as best as they can be and that all costs money. Uh, we also have some friends of the facility that have uh, acreage that backs up to the Balcones Canyonland Wilderness Preserve and we like to release them there that way we know they're going to an area where there's not hunting allowed, there's not going to be any over human interaction. Don't, don't eat that. Hey.